that I need you to survive. If you understand the meaning of the song, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. We take a lot of time to make sure that people know we love God. Amen. But we don't take the same time to make sure people know how we love each other. The song said, I need you to survive. It wasn't talking about the our and Christ relationship. It was talking about how we treat each other. See, it's not your church air that I'm concerned about. It's your outdoor business that I'm worried about. See, I, I know you're going to act right when you're up in here. But it's when the doors close and ain't nobody watching that I'm concerned about. First, giving honor to God and to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit. Yeah. To my family in the pulpit. God bless you. To my lovely wife and my son and my daughter in the absence. To my church family. To my friends. I thank y'all so much for coming. And to everybody here today. Yes. Y'all, I love you. And so do I. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, right now I pray for your increase and my decrease. Give me a word, Father God, that will save someone, heal someone, deliver someone, set someone free. Lord God, that they will come to know you, Father God, as Lord and Savior of their life. Father God, let us not worry about what's happening in the world. But for five minutes, Father God, let our focus be on you. In Jesus' name I pray. At the spiritual God, I want to preach from the title, Peanut Butter and Jelly. <laughs> Simple title, but powerful me. Watch out. See, because when you put peanut butter and jelly together, you ever try to pull apart that sand, you tear up everything. <laughs> together for one call. Yeah. Yet there's so much division among us. In the book of Matthew, the 27th chapter and the 46th verse, we talk about this one a lot in the seven last word. I just want to concentrate on that first part. Where it says, in that ninth hour, in all of our lives, all of us have gone through that ninth hour, the hour in our lives when we felt like we were by ourselves. You ever had a ninth hour where you were in the midst of something and you felt like nobody was there, you couldn't get no help, was nobody to turn to? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a Christian ninth hour? A time in your life when you gave your life to Christ and you believed and you thought that everything should have worked right, everything should have been taken care of, everything should have been straight because you gave your life to Christ. I'm talking about a Christian ninth hour. But you see, what you really didn't understand, it was at that time that your life became relevant to Satan. See, up until then, he didn't care whether you killed yourself or not. What you were doing would lead you on a path of destruction, and he said, so what? But it's when you turn your life over to Christ, Satan said, now it's time for me to get busy. Because at that time, you became dangerous. 
Became relevant. Yeah. Why? Because you was about to find out something about yourself you never knew. Yeah. But see, here and lies the problem. The problem comes in is we feel like as Christians, we got high stuff. We feel like it's certain people we can talk to, certain people we can tell them about, because we don't want everybody to know some spotty things about our background. See, we in fear that people going to find out that because I'm a preacher now, that when I was a homeowner back in the day, they may not see me. But the word says God didn't give us the spirit of fear. And it doesn't matter what you saw me as. As much as it is what you see me as right now, it's not about what I used to be. See, at that time it didn't matter the path I was taking. But now that God has found a purpose for me, and I understand the power within me, now I'm there. But I stopped by to let you know today. That God has put somebody, somebody. in your life. Yes. Somebody you okay. ignore. Somebody you're afraid to talk to yes. that can help you through your situation. Oh, yeah. And the reason why they can't help you is because you're afraid. Yeah. You're afraid they're going to find out something about uh, you. Yes, <laughs> but the truth be known, they may no. You ain't hiding from nobody but yourself. And guess what? That's who you fooling. But I want to talk about peanut butter and jelly. Why? Because Proverbs 18 and 24 tells me this. It says that a friend must show himself to be friend. And that there's a friend that is closer than a brother. See, sometimes it's that person in our lives that we're ignoring the most that can help us the best. I know that's right. Because you're afraid of letting them find out some stuff about you. Where who you are and what you've done. You ain't gotta hide from your past. You know, like I know your past gonna find you. You ain't got to hide from it. It's coming. But see, what we have to understand that God has put together the relationship from the very beginning of time. From the very beginning of Adam and Eve. When God had Adam and he saw that he made a mate for all the animals. And he saw Adam there by himself. He said, I, I, I'm going to give you somebody. Well, yeah. I, I, I'm not going to leave you lonely. I'm going to have a companion for you. Now understand, and let's separate something. I'm not talking about the intimacy companion. Because right. see, a lot of times when we think, it's always sexually or fleshly related. On, see, I'm talking about that person in your life that you can go to in that night now and say everything. And not worry about repercussions. Not worry about jumping. You can just lay it all out there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I know that's your friend. Yeah. But see, that's that friend that we got to be able to say to ourselves, if I take it to him, I got to be willing to receive it how I get it. And what I mean when I say that is this. You got to be able to take the truth, not the way you want it, but the way it is. See, some of us are only tough to people that's going to tell us what we want it. You got to have a friend that's going to tell you the truth. Therefore, three things. 
and then I'm done. All right, sir. All right. Number one, you need me. <laughs> that sounds like an arrogant statement, doesn't it? But see, it's biblical. Write it down, Ecclesiastic 4, 9, and 10. It says two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Watch this now. It says, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he had not another to help him up. I know you're right. When you buy yourself, you fall by yourself. But when you had that friend, you got somebody to help pick you up. That's why you need me. Because I'm going to be there for you. You might not like how I'm going to give it to you. But guess what? I never leave you. You know why? Because the word says, no man has ever seen God. But guess what? We see each other every day. It's the light within you that people may see God by your actions. There's too many Christians calling folk out their name, disrespecting folk, and in the same breath, saying, God bless you. <laughs> Right. Now the guy tried to correct me once. He said, man, you know, cursing don't mean the curse words. It mean putting a curse on somebody. <laughs> if I call you a mother and I'm not putting the last word on that, <laughs> I am cursing you right. because what I'm saying is you are a person that sleeps with women who are not wed. Therefore, you are an infidel. You have been cursed. My, my, my. To call To call somebody A has nothing to do with your butt. You are calling them a dumb. <laughs> to walk around and say I'm the King B, the Queen B I, and you know what I'm talking about. The rest means you a female dog in heat. Come on. And if you know anything about a dog, a dog is attracted to that smell, that scent, regardless of whether it belongs. <laughs> you are cursing them. <laughs> Keep it real. Be careful what you say. Out of the same mouth. Or not come curses and blessings. We got to change how we talk to one another. We got to change how we treat one another. That's why you need me because I don't have no problem telling you what's your mouth. <laughs> Right. Your pastor would not be happy knowing you talking like that. Uh, and yeah. guess what? You fear the pastor, but you need to fear God. Because hey. 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 your pastor might not have heard you, but God was definitely hey. looking for you. Uh, <laughs> Hold on. Right. You need me because Deuteronomy 8 and 3 says that man can't live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And what that means is some of us can eat. I'm one of them. I need my three hots every day. But just as concerned as we are about what we're putting in our mouth to feed our body, we ought to be equally concerned about what we take in to feed our soul. Your belly is full. Yeah. But what is your spirit on? Yeah. What are you reading every day? Yeah. What are you watching at night? That's right. You ain't taking time to break open the word, but you watch a dirty movie. You ain't got time to speak the truth, but you're in so and so house, and hours you ain't got no bed. Sleep around and not murder. Yeah. I'm going to 
called it, I told you I'm a friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a friend that tell the truth. Let me make it real for you for a minute. How many of us seen the movie Scarface? There, there was a scene in the movie, right? Take it back for a minute. And I'm going to show you how I, I, I viewed that. There was a scene in the movie where he was out of his wits. He got into an argument with his wife and she was going to walk out. And, and, and he snapped two for a second. And he looked around the room and he said, what y'all looking at? He said, you need me. He said, you need to point your finger at somebody like me and say, that's the bad guy. He said, but what does that make you? Good? He said, no, you're not good. You just know how to hide. <laughs> See, that's the problem with too many Christians. We become too good at hiding. <laughs> See, but here it is. We ain't hiding the fact that we sin. We hide the fact that we love God. See, when we come around some folk, we quick to want to let them know who we was and what we used to do, how we used to shake it, how we used to swing it, what we used to drink, what we used to smoke, what we used to do. But how quick are you to tell my brother or my sister, you and I shouldn't be talking like this. We shouldn't be saying these things around each other. It's quiet, ain't it? Uh, they say you can hear church. They say you can hear church mouth. You know why you can hear church mouth? Because when it's quiet, you should move your feet. That means you should watch out for some people. Why? Because Galatians 6, 7 through 9 says God will not be mocked. So is a man. Read. So he sold. If we sow to the flesh, we reap for the flesh. I asked you, what are you feeding? Are you feeding just your body? Or are you equally feeding your spirit? We got to start looking what we're doing. Folk of time, let me, let me be real for a second. I, I'm not a big news watcher. But every now and then when something going on, it catches my eye. And I was looking at them, Brother Chuck and I was talking about this, and I was looking at them talking about what's going over there in Iran and Iraq. And what they were talking about is spiritual warfare. Yeah. The Muslims are saying they're tired of bending over and being cursed. Mm -hmm. They already start rebelling. In Israel, they already start spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you right now, before in America, we never had to work. But what happened in Boston was not a happenstance. You better know, we better start opening up our eyes. We better start getting on point. Because guess what? Whether or not we get blown up, whether or not it be war, Christ is coming. Everybody here got an expiration date. And you go answer to God. Come on. You got to answer. For what you've done. It's coming back. Oh, yeah. Yes, but it's not by your works nope. that you'll say. But it is by your works that you shall be judged. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I realize that I have a purpose. You need me. Well, guess what? Two things. Number two, I need you. Don't miss it. I need you. Again in Ecclesiastes, the 11th and the 12th verses says, Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Again, here it is. He said, if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Not broken. The threefold cord. My Lord. It's true friendship. Yes. Yeah, it is. True friendship. It's not easy to walk away from a friend and have no feelings. That's right. That's right. It's not easy to walk away from somebody you say you love, somebody you say you care about, and think nothing of. That's true. It's not easy. Because it's not easy, I need you. 
I need you when I'm down. I need you when I'm going through. I need you when I'm sick. I need you when I'm suffering. I need you when I'm hurt. I need you just when I need you just to say thank you. I need you just to hug me. I need you in the morning just to say have a good day. I need you just to be there. You ever needed somebody like that? Uh, yeah. Just to be there. Why? In the book of Corinthians. Yeah. In that verse, he said there's nothing uncommon to man. Yeah. That's right. Everybody in here has gone through something. And guess what? Because you've gone through something, you can speak to that same thing for somebody else. But because we want to hide what we got, because we want to hide what we've been through, you can't help nobody because you're sitting on what can help. That they might start thinking about you. But God didn't give us the spirit of fear. You gotta look that thing in the eye and say, Yes! I was a sinner. Yeah, I walked on the other side of the tracks. But there is a saving grace. There is a Lord and a Savior. And it's not And it saved me simply because. Because he loved me even before I first loved myself. That's powerful. He loved me enough to die for me. He cared enough for me to die for me. Thank you. Even when I didn't come to church, even when I didn't even know what time Sunday school started, on the Sundays when I slept in, when going to Denny's at 10 was more important than being in church. Where for me the weekend meant Friday to not punch in Monday morning. He died for me. And I do him a disservice when I'm fearful to tell somebody what he's done for me. When I'm afraid to share with somebody what he's done for me. He died on the cross that I might have even when I did this. That's right. He made my children healthy. When I had a child out of wedlock. He got me to work safely when I was up late all night. He carried me where I needed to go. Thank you, Jesus. When I didn't know where I was going. That's right. He kept that car on the road at the path. The song said he kept. Oh yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. How do I need you? This is a true story. Just last Sunday, I was faced with a dilemma some of you know. My mother called me at 8.30. Now I'm due here to teach Sunday school at 9. Now I'm going to show you where I'm at. I'm struggling. I said, God, I want to do right by you. That's right. You said, if I trust you, 
Uh, friends, tell the truth, bro. We all friends, bro. We intervene in each other's lives and our faith. We gossip and we backstab about one another. But Jesus said he thought it not right to be equal with God. Final thing with this. In Israel, they had the same complaint. They weren't happy with just being Israel. They wanted a king like everybody else wanted a king. They wanted to be just like everybody else. Not understanding that they had the king of kings, the Lord of lords. They had the alpha and the omega. We want a king. We need a president. We need a mayor. We need a governor to spend our money, to tell us what to do, to make rules and laws on how we live in that they break all the time. They needed that. And we're still suffering today because of that. You don't need nobody right. to tell you how to live. As long as you got Christ in your heart, you just got to be willing to tap into the soul. It said, greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. We can't be afraid to tap into it. Now, I don't know if you like peanut butter or jelly, but I challenge you to go home today. And when somebody asks you what for lunch, tell them peanut butter and jelly. You say, if you don't fix it, what peanut butter and jelly? That's all you want to fix? Yeah, because we need to stick to See you with a new joy. Uh, when I see you with a new joy. 